So um, welcome everyone to the fourth day of um, welcome everyone to the fourth day of um, welcome everyone to to the tip conference. Yes, I think there was an echo uh, in the beginning. I think my live is also my live stream is also on. So apologies for that. Um, yeah. So welcome to this session. It's like um, plenary about experimentation and evaluation of the TIP conference 2022. And um, we are really excited about this particular session. Um, and we, we are going to take you um, through a journey that we have, have been having over the last weeks, um, running up to this, this moment. So, so we are really excited to be here. Um, I think we are going to just wait a minute, another minute or so, uh, before we start um, the presentation, just so everyone can join in from the sessions they were in. So it's two past um, the hour. Um, I think we should get started. Um, so welcome again um, for those of uh, those of you joining in from different parts of the world, uh, joining us for the fourth day of the conference. So this is a plenary about experimenting with the TIP conference 2022 uh, for developing the knowledge infrastructure on transformative innovation policy. And this in this particular um, presentation, we are going to take you um, to the behind the scenes of the conference, if you like. Um, and this, this is a session that is organized, um, and not just the session, but also the whole work behind experimenting with the conference is organized um, by this particular committee, which is the Experimentation and Evaluation Committee of the conference, together with the help of the wider team, uh, wider organizing team, and also the wider uh, uh, colleagues in the wider community. So, um, so welcome. And I'm going to just talk through um, the, the contents or the agenda for, for the next hour. Um, so of course we want this, um, this session to be interactive, but we also want to kind of present uh, what we do, uh, what, why we did, um, what we did, and what we did, and how we did it. So indeed we are going to sort of structure this presentation across three sections. So we have what we, in the first section, we will need to talk about why we are experimenting with the conference. Um, and then in the second section, we talk about what we mean by experimenting with the conference, as many of you might be wondering, um, what, what is experimenting with the conference? And then um, finally, we will take you through um, various activities and various things that we have been doing um, to answer this question about how the kind of process, um, the method uh, and the mechanisms of doing experimenting with the conference. So hopefully you will have a kind of a broad overview of what we have been doing in the experimentation committee um, as well as um, as well as the kind of wider range of activities that are going on behind the scenes of the conference, which you kind of see also some parts of it you also kind of see in the foreground of the conference. So it will kind of make sense, uh, hopefully after this presentation, uh, on, on some of the activities that you have been coming across um, while navigating the, plat the conference platform. So with that note, um, and that's that's the sort of agenda, and we, of course, uh, this is not just a presentation. We also have a lot of um, moments where we would like you to actually um, uh, interact with us uh, through Mentimeter. So we will be using Mentimeter um, in the conference platform. So um, so hold on, uh, we, will, we will give you 
um, instructions on exactly how to use Mentimeter, um, but, um, but in, in the right moment. So with that note, I hand over to uh, Katharina, Katharina Schiller, who will take us through the first section of this presentation. Thank you, Vipashi. Thank you for that introduction. And yeah, welcome everybody again to the to our presentation on what are we doing on experimenting in this conference. So section one, I'm just going to talk a little bit about our assumptions and thoughts behind, you know, why we even started this idea of why are we experimenting with the conference? Well, to begin, um, based on our experiences and also there's a little bit of academic literature about this, but based mostly on a lot of experiences we were thinking about the fact that conventional academic conference spaces just are insufficient for this trans transdisciplinary knowledge creation and exchange, such as the one that we want to um, provide on transformative innovation policy. And why are they insufficient? Well, I've heard in the past days of this conference, I've also heard a, a lot of people talking about these, some comments on, for example, that there is insufficient time for interactions that these academic paper presentations are just very targeted towards an academic audience. There's not necessarily the, you know, the real world touch, and it can be really hard for practitioners, for policymakers, for people actually on the ground to be interpreting these academic, very theoretical concepts and papers in a way that is relevant to their work. So that doesn't really allow for this for multi-stakeholders to come together and for to truly reflect on what are we doing and why are we doing it. So in academic conferences, we have a lot of these discussions on theories, on empirical evidence, on analysis and results, but not so much as I previously said on, yeah, the real world, like how do we actually instrumentalize these? How do we get them to work on the ground? And we, of course, we meet other conference participants during breaks. Uh, we have been trying to create dedicated spaces in this conference as well for that. But of course, as we all know, this is much more complicated online than it is. Uh, you miss the serendipity of you uh, of conferences that you have in, in real life. But also during academic conferences in real life, you only have limited access to papers and people also after the conference. So you have a geographical divide, who can pay, who can't pay, who can afford to come, who can afford to, to participate in these. And often we have a lack of dedicated spaces to reflect on the implications of the proposals presented. And what I've heard a lot this week is people saying there's also a lack of dedicated Q&A time. So we have you know, a lot of presentations that go on, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes presentation uh, questions afterward, but not really time for an involved discussion. So even though people's goals are to get to know what others are working on and also to get feedback for their own research, the I think you learn a lot more about what others are working on and the feedback part for you is sometimes a little, well, it can be not so extensive because of the lack of dedicated time for this. So why do we need to go beyond the dedicated, uh, the traditional conference? Well, we wanna produce and we also wanna implement new forms of knowledge for transformations and why? Well, we have this need for transdisciplinary spaces where also where many different kinds of actors can come together, not just talking about academics, but policymakers, practitioners, lots of different people that are needed to really create these deep transitions and implement them moving forward. We also, we found a need for a deep learning and unlearning for to do this transformative research because we are, all of us, of course, stuck in the not stuck in, but conditioned by our, the ways that we have learned, our, our, the context we have learned in. And so what do we need to do to kind of break open these structures and really allow for a deep learning, for a second order learning, to understand these concepts, not theoretically, but also to be able to integrate them really into our worldview and be able to apply them in a non-academic setting, which, of course, we have these principles of knowledge co-creation that we want to um, support with this. Again, bringing in a multiplicity of actors, understanding different points of view, creating knowledge, not just in a top-down process, not just in an academia-focused process, but also really valuing and integrating knowledge that has been created by non-academic forms and by non-academic participants, which is often a problem in academia and in, in many projects, I think. 
Beyond papers, beyond this academic focus, we also want to implement projects, projects, programs, policies, and really have this real world impact that we that we talk about, but that I don't know, you know, how in for many of us, how far it happens beyond the papers that we actually publish. And of course, we have this need for sustained multi-network collaboration, which is why at this conference we have it's of course a tipsy conference, but we have the other three networks that are coming together here as well to create this really a plurality of space as a collaborative space where we can come together and work and, and reflect on these issues. We also, we always have a need for inclusivity. We have the North South divide, um, basically talking about how uh, different forms of your context can, uh, can, in, can inform your ways uh, of accessing a conference and a ways of accessing knowledge and how do we work to overcome that and to make it to have really to foment systemic change across and over borders. So with these first reflections, I think uh, we will go into our first chat because we'd like to uh, our first question because we'd like to hear what what you have to think about this. So beside the chat tab, you will see a tab named Mentimeter on the right hand side of the stage or of the video. So if you please click the Mentimeter tab and use the code that you see on the screen, then our first question will pop up and we look forward to your answers on this. But our first question is, have you yourself been in conferences that you feel provide not sufficient space for true knowledge creation and exchange? What have been your experiences on this? And um, we'd like to capture those quickly with the, with the, first, with the first question and uh, which is a multiple choice answer. Oh, well, you see, looking at the first answer is coming in. Yeah, we see that I think uh, it looks like it's resonating our first slides. <laughs> Thinking about the traditional academic structure of conferences. So in the this is yeah really interesting. I'm especially interested in the 6% down at the bottom right now who says I haven't been in such a conference. And in the next question that we'll get to in just a minute, the um, we'll get in more into your ideas of why you are answering here the way that you are answering. Um, for the, I'm just looking at the chat now for the Mentimeter link, please go to the, there's a, a tab on the right next to the chat tab. And that is where the, the link is to the Mentimeter. So we see more people answering and still, yeah, I think the, well, the, the, it shows the majority of us have been to many such conferences where 15 people have answered, thank you, that have been to many such conferences. Another question to you, what have been your main criticisms or concerns with conferences that you have attended so far? And please just type your answer in for this and then we'll see what pops up. So we see the first answers here coming in. Yeah, also reflecting some of the things that I've heard this week at the conference, the short time. Look, we see the little time for discussion, short time for Q&A. That also speaks to the limited interaction possibilities and a lack of time to exchange. Also focusing on this one directional presentation. Uh huh. Conference fees, of course. Yeah, also low quality papers sometimes. A <laughs> Got lots of boring, boring presentations and narcissistic comments that could definitely happen. Yeah, this overaction with too many parallel sessions and just too much going on at the same time. I think that also is picked up here with a too little time to listen and learn. Too much focus and teach and tell exactly. I think that's really grasping the core of what we of the assumptions that we had going into this uh, conference, into this experimental conference present uh, space here. Yeah, I think these are picking up some of the key, your comments are really picking up some of the key issues that we reflected on. 
<clears throat> it's really interesting to see them all popping up here. Thank you so much for your for these interesting comments. We're also going to be gathering these comments and using them in a post-conference reflection and evaluation uh, process. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. And with that, I'm going to give over to Vipashi, I believe, who will go a little more into what we are doing here. Yes. Um, thank you, Katharina. Um, so we are quickly moving to thank you so much uh, to all of you who are joining in and, and responding to the, the, the questions in Mentimeter. Um, so we are going to go to the second part of this presentation which is about what we mean by experimenting with a conference. Uh, so the real core of experimentation. And uh, Diana, Diana Velasco is going to take us through that. Welcome, Diana. Thank you, Upashi, and thank you, Katarina. So yes, what do we mean by experimenting with a conference? Well, for us, it's uh, creating a space for alternative knowledge practices in specifically for this conference for transformative uh, innovation policy. And it's uh, with this purpose that we find a theory of change that could give us uh, like the way through this endeavor. So why a theory of change? And why, uh, what do we mean by a transformative uh, theory of change? Um, Perhaps you can go to the next slide. So basically, uh, theories of change are a way to structure long-term or impact aims, mid-term and short-term changes in people's organizations and institutions or outcomes. And therefore, it provides us with a clear pathway or like different pathways to achieve those changes. Basically, uh, the theories of change constitute the assumptions, ambitions on how uh, we envision or we want those changes, uh, these are changes to happen and how we want them to unfold. Um, and in our case, we call it a transformative theory of change because our theories of change are based in the transformative outcomes that are related to how to create alternatives to the dominant and unsustainable practices and how to take advantages of those windows of opportunities uh, that are there when uh, these unsustainable practices start to change because of different pressures. The theories of change also, besides guiding us in the process of how to move uh, forward those uh, pathways, provide us with the elements to evaluate if we are steering or are at least we are fostering those changes in the desired uh, directions. And that's when we use what we call a monitoring, evaluation and learning plan in the way that we use the theories of change. This is a process that it's all the time unfolding and is adaptive uh, while we are doing the intervention. So in the next slide, we'll see the um, our theory of change. Uh, basically, we are using, like for this conference, a theory of change developed by the experimentation committee. And the main goal for our conference is to build a sustainable and inclusive uh, knowledge infrastructure for systemic transformation pathways. That is a long-term goal. We are uh, clear that we want to achieve that with one conference. We are clear that this is just one part of the process, but that is what we want to get, uh, right? So for the conference, in terms of the changes that we want to produce, we link them to basically three uh, transformative outcomes. So one is related to uh, networks, how we can broaden and deepen different kinds of uh, actors that are here together to pursue uh, transformative initiatives. How can we, through the conference, uh, trigger learning and unlearning uh, during the conference? And for doing that, we've been designing different parts of the conference before, during the conference, and after the conference. Also, how the conference can provide spaces 
to uh, allow diverse and misaligning uh, perspectives uh, on transformative innovation policy. And a fourth one that is related specifically to conferences and what Katharina was saying at the beginning on how can we use conferences to uh, transcend blockages that hinders transformation pathways. As you see here, like each one of these outcomes are, re are related to transformative outcomes with networking, uh, navigating expectations, learning and unlearning. And this one for the conference, beside learning, we want to upscale, replicate and circulate practices. And that's why we are presenting also today what we've done. So in your conferences, in what the, in the things that you are doing, you can also use what we've learned through this uh, process. Co theories of change, as I said before, have assumptions of like how we think changes will happen or what we think that we need to do because there are things that are not working. So, for example, we have uh, here in uh, misaligning perspectives on, on TIP that uh, that usually there are perspectives that are excluded from the traditional knowledge infrastructures. Or for uh, the conferences, as we said before, traditional academic conferences are not very effective in overcoming transformational failure, right? Also, for uh, each outcome, we have outputs, outputs more in terms of the results that we expect. So in terms of networks, we would, our output, and that's the way that we'll evaluate afterwards, would be to have a platform that allows experiences, practices, strategies, or in terms of learning, we want as an output to have elements that enable changes in knowledge, attitudes, uh, and interactions recorded. For each one of these outputs, we have activities attained to each one of uh, them. Let me go, for example, to uh, this that is related to two outputs uh, uh, related to uh, characterization of elements of traditional conferences and mapping and aligning a, a broad palette of visions. These activities related to how to analyze or we should analyze the submissions uh, to the conference and see what different narratives are there related to, to transformative uh, innovation policy. So said that, we can come back to the presentation. Um, we, uh, in, the, in, the, in the question of what do we mean uh, for, a, for, a, for experimentation, we uh, have stretched the notion of tra traditional conferences by uh, working together in different committees, like what is usual is to have the executive and scientific committee, but for this conference, its experimentation was a central part and learning was a central part. We had an experimentation and evaluation committee, also a committee to create this knowledge infrastructure and research agenda. And I want to stress here that it's been an experience so far to have members of different networks working together with different visions and making this uh, happening together. Um, also, the notion of inclusivity and diversity has been from the very beginning of the conference with the uh, call uh, for expression of interest. We didn't do a call for papers or projects. We wanted to overall to have more, a more inclusive uh, set of uh, proposals and initiatives from different kind of actors. And that's also that diversity and inclusivity was uh, in the program designed and in the monitoring evaluation and learning plan that we'll talk in the, in the, sec in the third session, section of this presentation. Um, also, as uh, you've seen, we had we decided to have dedicated spaces uh, to networking and learning. This was an experiment. Uh, this is not usual in the conferences, but, but, but what we wanted was to have like uh, different kind of settings where people could interact, would feel comfortable to share their experiences about the different uh, parts of the conference, but also to connect with others, not just uh, through an email, but in a dedicated space uh, related to specific topics. And uh, in terms of, uh, of us, as I said, we were uh, ourselves a diverse group of people. So we uh, had different visions, but we were always in this kind of generative listening with an open heart, open mind, open will to make all of this happen. And then uh, finally, having a, a monitoring, evaluation and learning plan for the conference itself that has helped us through the whole process reflect 
uh, as uh, the designers of this conference, how the process was unfolding. And as I said before, the conference is a milestone in the process. It's just a part of this building of a sustainable uh, knowledge infrastructure. Um, so now what we ask you is to go back to your tab, is the tab beside the chat one, or go to www.menti.com, use the code and um, um, re reply, give answer to other questions. I'll put the Menti now. Um, Okay. So our next question is, what does experimenting with a conference mean to you? Um, again, it's open for you to, uh, to give us uh, your visions after uh, what we just discussed. Uh, what does experimenting with a conference mean to you? And uh, if we can go to the Menti results uh, window now. Okay, vulnerability. I like that uh, word because uh, it's uh, actually accepting and acknowledging that we are vulner vulnerable and that we are exposing ourselves all the time, but then that is important to build trust finally, and to create uh, deeper and meaningful networks and learning uh, experiences, um, gathering, gathering evidence, and also like finding best practices, being with an open mind, basically, evidence, practices, uh, trying new things, uh, feel safe, that is related to trust, which is very important to create new things. Learning, learning is in the middle. Learning is difficult to, to track, to know if we are really learning and how and to what extent. But yeah, uh, going beyond knowledge, uh, trying new things, innovation, finding best practices. This is great. Um, okay, just uh, you can put more than one entrance uh, if you want. Noel. Uh, use novel ways, use unusual formats, uh, like invite different actors, empathy, super important. Okay, now we have 32 uh, answers. And I'll go then uh, to, the, to the next question, that it's uh, related to how strongly does this statement resonate with you about your role in making the TIP conference 2022 more experimental. Uh, remember that this is a shared endeavor and to make these uh, spaces safe, to build trust, to learn together, uh, it's not a kind of one way from the speakers and organizers to participants. We need to do this together and that's what is a knowledge infrastructure as well, a community. So, okay. Um, I have been reflecting on my own knowledge and assumptions at this conference. Okay, this is a ranking from one to five. And this will help us to keep building new formats to make this happen. I have act actively participated by sharing my ideas and opinions uh, in the sessions. We hope that you feel you felt in a safe space to do that, to feel comfortable to share with others. Uh, Less about uh, networking, I see. Uh, it's when we say broaden, it's like I've expanded my network of people that I that I haven't uh, interacted with before. And deepening, it's more related to I al I've already connected with these uh, uh, different people, but through the conference, I had a chance to do more things together, to know the other uh, my colleagues, my peers better and therefore have more opportunities to do more things. Uh, I had innovative ideas about the conference design and organization, and organization and share it with the organizers. Please do so if you have some. We have a guided uh, reflection 
there's an announce in the platform and you will see in the conference platform like a guided ref reflection option uh, on the bottom, uh, on the left panel, for you to give us feedback of how you felt and what would you like to see in different uh, conferences. Um, I believe that my presence in making the uh, TIP conference space more uh, uh, inclusive and diverse, good and in other ways that are not captured in, option, in the options above. So if you can provide us feedback about those, that would be great. So I'll uh, hand over to Bopashi. Thanks. Great, thank you. Thank you again uh, to, to our audience for really, really innovative and really engaging answers. I think that was really fascinating to see the, the different um, notions or different understandings of experimentation and also um, your ideas of how to, what, what would be your role as, as a conference participant. And, and I think that I was, we were really interested to know about what you would bring in in this conference because of course um, uh, we can talk about the design of the conference but it's also the participation that makes it uh, much more, much more um, interesting. Um, for any conference. So thank you so much, uh, Diana, and um, I will I will I will move on to the final part of this presentation. Um, so we have been talking about um, you know we have Diana have been touching about a few things we have been doing, but I would like to take you through more maybe more concretely about how we are really experimenting with this conference, um, and to. And the short answer to that how question is that to achieve our transformative outcomes, uh, you know, the four outcomes that Diana showed in our theory of change, we really developed uh, multiple mechanisms in the background and also in the foreground of the conference. And that is guided by our theory of change. Um, so in this particular section, we are going to delve deeper into those mechanisms um, that we have created in the background um, for, for achieving the transformative outcomes. So when we talk about the outcome, and here we are specifically thinking of the monitoring, evaluation, and the learning plan for the conference. Um, so we have the outcome. For each outcome, uh, we have, uh, we have um, certain activities um, that we designed um, for pre-conference for during the conference and for after the conference. Um, and for each of these activities, you have what is the activity, and we have also articulated what is the purpose of the activity, um, the, the kind of description of the activity itself, and who is going to do the activity. So you see there is a, um, so there, there was a sort of an extensive plan that was, um, that was written down in order to really uh, make this MEL plan, um, uh, um, implement a MEL plan for the conference. So these activities um, are, are varied. Um, so we have activities such as observation, surveys, interviews, and data visualization. And I'm going to give you a flavor of each of those in the next couple of slides. But the idea is uh, the main uh, important aspect of it is the continuity aspect. So we really wanted to maintain continuity as um, as in terms of monitoring, not just monitoring the conference dur during while the conference is happening, but also what can we actually monitor before the conference, during perhaps the registration, um, during uh, when, when you actually submitted the expressions of interest, um, and also uh, what can we actually monitor after the conference. So that was a really an experimental aspect of our planning, I would say, to think uh, for think about the pre-conference and the post-conference uh, settings. And finally, and I think the, another experimental aspect of it was, of course, our focus on second order learning. So reflexivity. So second order learning is, um, is about going beyond think, going beyond the learning concepts or the first order learning is about learning concepts, learning not, so it's kind of new knowledges, new concepts and new theories. But what we are really interested in is the reflexivity. So it's about learning, uh, to, to, it's about questioning our assumptions, it's about knowing what, what we are learning and how we are learning, uh, kind of reflecting on that process. 
um, but also unlearning. So whether or not in the, conf the conference is enabling a space for learning and unlearning is, is really important aspect of experimentation for us. So we do have these moments of reflection and learning that are really, really central to our, um, to our conference design. So just to give you an example of uh, what we are doing uh, in, order, in terms of activity um, for each of the outcomes. So as an example, uh, for the outcome of broadening and deepening of networks, um, so we really want to monitor whether or not um, the networks uh, of actors um, are, are the networks are broadened as well as deepened in pursuing transformative initiatives. So this is an example of an activity we plan to do. So this was a pre-conference activity where uh, we wanted to kind of draw on the submissions, um, the authors of the submissions, and think of uh, what kind of network does these authors um, and their affiliations form. So we have the purpose of this activity, we kind of articulated the purpose as to have a baseline of the current network of speakers engaging in the conference. And that's the kind of looking at visualizing a baseline and that could really help in understanding the change in the network over time. And the activity specifically was about to review each of the submission, the registration, um, and, and, and that includes the speakers and the affiliations and to have a kind of in data inputted in a network software. And on the right, you see a kind of a very rough visualization of this network. So we are not going to, we don't have the time to actually go into the, the result of this, this data visualization, but just to give you a sense of the process that we went through. Um, in order to sort of try to trying to visualize. So these are the kind of nodes that are that are uh, speakers um, who are attending these conferences and how they are connected to other speakers in the conference. Maybe they are presenting together, maybe they are in the same session, maybe through affiliation. So, so we have been trying to also do that kind of analysis of how people who are attending this conference at this moment are connected to one another. So that's about networks. And then we also kind of did a pre-conference um, activity about uh, the outcome of, of diverse and misaligning visions and perspectives, whether, um, and whether that can be adapted and contextualized. So, so basically this, this uh, activity was about to identify the different visions on transformations that are, um, that are expressed in the submissions. So again, um, we look through the submissions with the purpose in mind that we want to map the different, the diversity of visions and perspectives um, that we get um, and, and to get a sense of the diversity from the different uh, articulation of um, visions of transformation that we see in the, in the submissions. So we reviewed as an activity for this outcome, we reviewed the submissions, we built a format to codify um, the visions and the perspectives, and we tried to, uh, and we did display the results, a kind of preliminary results. Um, again, this is not, not to go into the details of the results, but you can see already that there are some sort of clusters uh, in which there are four, rather class four, four clusters in which you can see the diversity of visions of transformation can be clubbed together. Uh, based on what you have, um, what you have provided us uh, through uh, through your description of your uh, projects and programs, um, in 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 order to be part of this conference. So that was about activities, pre-conference activities for for uh, for the outcomes. But we also want, I also wanted to kind of stress on the aspect of observation. So maybe some of you, maybe all of you have noticed in your sessions that we have a group of observers uh, who are really observing and analyzing um, the different nuances of, uh, of learning, participation, networking, and also the visions, expectations, uh, conflict and openness that, that is being, um, that is being um, um, through, through observing the sessions. So in the sessions, we, we kind of invited the observers. So we have a group of, um, uh, I think, 10 observers who are silently there in your, con in your session, 
um, and they are basically we provided them with some guiding questions and of course they are not um, they're not restricted by these questions but uh, just to give you an example, we asked them to see whether multiple and different perspectives are represented in the discussion in the sessions, where the participants in the session open and comfortable to express their points of view, even in situations of disagreement. Um, so that is to sort of map conflict and openness. And also we really asked them to observe how conducive was the session format for networking and learning. So this is for them, of course, this is subject to interpretation and analytical observation by the observers. Uh, but we really wanted to create that space um, of experimentation with, with the session and try to monitor how, um, how, these, how, how the experimentation is being playing out um, in terms of our achieving our outcomes. Um, and I think some of our observers are in the in the session, so maybe um, you can also interact with them and say hi in the chat. And then I, I would also like to point, uh, kind of mention the idea of guided reflections. So these are essentially surveys, um, but the idea is that it's not a survey for us. It's unlike traditional purpose of a survey where um, where you know we are collecting data. So surveys are generally about collecting data. Uh, but here, I think we wanted to really create a space, another asynchronous space for guided reflection. So these survey questions that you get um, through various, in, in different moments of the conference, these are again questions that are designed to, um, to enable you to think about your participation, your reflection, your learning, your networking, your visioning at the conference. So we have four moments uh, in the conference. So um, in, again, spanning between pre-conference, during the conference and post-conference. So we have the mapping of your expectations about the conference. This was this already happened before the conference and I think many of you have responded to this. So we asked about your plan to attend the, ses attend the sessions uh, and what is your kind of expectation um, uh, from, from this conference. But what is really interesting, uh, and this is again a, a questionnaire that we designed, I think we, it was quite new. Um, it is quite new to think of asking the session conveners. So as a second questionnaire, a second survey is about mapping the, second con the session conveners reflections. So we asked the session conveners how, for example, how was the level of interest and energy and enthusiasm among, among participants in your session? And to what extent are new ideas and new alternative definitions are shared in the session? Um, so so it's, it's just to give you examples of uh, how the session conveners are also sort of monitoring uh, different aspect of um, experimenting with the session. And thirdly, um, I think this morning we have a third questionnaire, a third survey uh, that went out in the announcement section. Um, and here, this is a mid-conference assessment, a mid-conference -con uh, guided reflection where we ask all participants in the conference to think about whether you had a, a, a never thought like that kind of moment or um, did you feel um, that what I know needs re real serious questioning? So these are, again, we are really encouraging you to, to think um, and to reflect on your understanding and your learning process. Um, and finally, we will have a post-conference uh, reflection. So this is, um, this could be kind of similar to, uh, to a post-conference survey, but again, these are reflective questions where we really ask you to say whether you have expanded your network, whether um, the, the conference given you possibility of more activities that you plan to do, uh, whether it was a space like that, and did the conference um, really trigger new definitions, new conceptualizations and alternative narratives. So this is just a, uh, the, the fourth one is a sneak peek into, uh, into a questionnaire that you will receive in, I think, tomorrow. So just to give you, uh, flavor of uh, the different type of questions that we are planning to ask uh, in order to capture uh, or in order to sort of assess how learning, how networking, and how um, visioning uh, is happening at the conference. 
And then there is this live reflection and learning sessions um, that are mainly led by Vicky and Ed. So many of you are joining those sessions. So you would see this is a this is the design of the board of that session. So this is again an experimentation in, in our opinion, where we are actually following um, the theory of change. Uh, and on each day we are going in depth into the aspect of um, networking, into the aspect of learning, into the aspect of visions and perspectives. So, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's again another space for reflection. It's a live space as opposed to the asynchronous space, which, is, which the surveys provide. So these are, again, this is about thinking of different modes because one of the things that we realized is that not everyone learn in the same way and not everyone does things in the same way. So this is also to, to cater to um, diverse needs and diverse preferences. Um, so maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, so maybe some people would be using some spaces more efficiently and more will be more engaged in some spaces for learning uh, versus other spaces and that's fine so this is just to open up the space um, and and to kind of create alternative spaces as well and then there is thinking about beyond the conference so we did think about think a lot and discuss a lot within the experimentation committee about how to really continue the conversation how to really have an infrastructure which doesn't just trickle doesn't just crumble at the end of the conference so how do we manage to sort of continue the conversation continue the learning and uh, and, and network building and we have for that um, in order to achieve that we created the, a slack space uh, which is a kind of a social uh, platform for which has threads which which has channels um, and you can actually be part of a community, be part of the, the TIP community, the Transformative Innovation Policy Slack community, where um, you can, and so and the idea is it's a bottom-up space. So it's not a space which is like, unlike, you know, um, unlike newsletters, which is like a unidirectional space. Um, it's a bottom-up space. It's a collaborative space. So everyone is there to, to contribute. And it's also reliant on participation and contribution from everyone to sustain a momentum from this conference. Um, so yeah, we really, really thought this could be a infrastructure, a hard infrastructure uh, for, for, for continuing the momentum of learning and networking at the conference. And that's the sort of overview of, uh, of the various very 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 different mechanisms of we, that we are using for experimenting with the conference using our theory of change and now i, I would all, i would request you to go back to mentimeter if you can so again uh, going to the the tab next to your chat and uh, typing in the code 71470105 and then there will be a question that is coming up um, that is coming up on to you and some of you have already answered. So the question is, given what you have just heard, what did you, did you feel that this conference was experimental? So there are at least a couple of people saying that yes, to a large extent and to some extent. Okay. And some of you did also say, one of you did say that it's not experimental. Um, yeah, so we, we are kind of, this is also our way to get feedback um, and to get an understanding of, given that we are, uh, we are given our plans and given our ideas of experimentation, whether or not you as a participant of this conference felt that um, this uh, we did was success, whether we were successful in experimenting with the conference. And I think the majority of the, the responses are, uh, are either to a large extent or to some extent, which is really great to see. Okay, I think we can go to the next question. Yeah, so this is a more, again, a, a kind of a qualitative question. And so the question is, what did you find experimental? about the tip conference if at all so did, if you have answered to a large extent or to us to some extent maybe you can share something about 
um, what exactly did you find experimental? Yeah, uh, there was one answer about the learning sessions, which, uh, which was felt to be an experimental. The platform itself, so that's a, that's a real uh, compliment, I guess. Um, um, yeah, so, so the platform also, you know, when, when you think of uh, online conference, because the online conference, well, I must also say that the idea that we, we want to have this conference online was not dictated by the pandemic. So we did, uh, if I remember the very early conversations within the tip, um, within, our, within our colleagues, I remember that we wanted to experiment with a conference which is, which is zero emission, which is carbon neutral, well, not carbon neutral, but zero emission, where you, do, you, don't, you don't need to fly and thinking of alternative uh, virtual ways of uh, conferencing. So we did think of platforms very seriously. And the networking sessions, the platform again, uh, space for learning and reflection, diversity of sessions, um, diversity of type of sessions. That's really interesting. Yes, we did try to do that. Um, the formats were specifically based on projects and initiatives and not paper presentations. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's a lot of um, responses. Thank you, and uh, and I see a lot of synergy between the responses, uh, especially I think the learning sessions and the networking session, and the platform itself uh, is quite um, uh, quite popular as answers. So the next and the final question, and this is again asking you to be a bit more uh, to provoke you a bit more. Um, so the question is, if you are organizing a conference in near future, one thing that you would like to replicate from the TIP conference 2022. So again, any thoughts about, uh, yeah, observation. Yes, that's, uh, that's good to know. And I, we, can, we can share the, the guides if you want, you know, please feel free to come back to us. We can definitely share more um, knowledge and also resources that we have created for, uh, for those uh, activities. Develop a theory of change. Yes, please do. I think that really helped us um, create uh, use the changing formats um, and networking sessions, mid and post conference reflections. Yes, that really helps in kind of monitoring the change um, in answers and in perceptions. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it's quite good to see at least some sort of takeaway from the conference. Um, not necessarily everything. So it's also, I think we are quite open to uh, feedback, crit more crit critical feedback. Um, it's um, session with investors. Um, that was, that was, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, robust monitoring and evaluation mechanism. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if you, if you're planning a conference in new future, and it's good to see many people are, uh, are planning conference, planning to organize conferences in the future, uh, but maybe hypothetically, hypothetically also, uh, good to see the kind of takeaway messages from there. Thank you all. I think that's, that's a real, real good, um, great uh, sort of uh, range of responses and quality of responses. Really appreciate you participating in this. And I think that's, um, that's with that, that is the final sort of slide. And I just wanted to end um, this, the presentation before we open up for maybe we have a slight, uh, we have very less time, but, uh, but just to show you that who the experimentation committee was. Uh, and of course, we get got a feedback from from many, many more people beyond this this team. But indeed, this was the team who developed. It was a truly collaborative work, and and I can't even remember how many times we met in the last six months to develop this. So so this was a real, real a collaborative journey for us. Thank you all for the for listening to us for the patience. Um, 
And I, I think we have time for a couple of questions. Um, so Diana and Katrina, is there any question on the chat that we can pick up on? I think we have a question from Lakshia here, so who wonders if having a platform alone can be considered as an outcome, as an output for outcome, if platforms don't use it efficiently. So maybe you'd like to speak mm -hmm. to that? Well, I would say, uh, like Shia, that yes, uh, remember that the outcome, what we are, actually, what we want to achieve is to have deeper networks, expand networks, promote learning. That is the, those are the changes that we want to, to trigger, right? For those changes, we needed a platform, like not only for this conference, like the platform that you are that we are using for the conference, but also something that can lead us through that long-term impact that is the knowledge infrastructure. So yes, a result it's having a platform, but just by checking that, you don't achieve the change. And that is the difference between output and outcome. And that goes with the Andrew's uh, comments uh, impression of a Slack. Is a Slack only the, a good mechanism to to keep and to, to keep the conversation uh, ongoing, like to follow up, it's one, not the only. And for this, we need the whole community to find ways to keep uh, these reflections ongoing. So here, it looks like we have a next question from Andrew. How do you think we could work on deepening the inter-network connections? Yeah, so I can probably start reflecting on that. So I think deepening um, is indeed important because we can, you know, include more and more people. Uh, and indeed, we have to sort of broaden and think and look for more scholars who are working on similar topics. But I think it's also important that we create space for deep learning and also build sort of, so deepening of networks is, is about trust building. So it's about having that mutual trust and mutual understanding and to develop things together. Um, so I think I don't have a sort of a quick um, activities for deepening network, but I think one way to think about it is could be some sort of bilateral events or some creating some events or some space for, for, for more communication and for more, um, um, for more um, sort of, uh, yeah, space for more um, deeper reflection, I would say, um, and an and open and safe communication. I think that's, that's one way to deepen network. Okay, I think that there are, there are a couple of uh, more questions uh, from Miriam. This, there's, a, there's a comment on the level of reflection. Thanks, Miriam. Um, we want to end on time so you can move to the next uh, sessions. We'll um, share this the presentation in the description of the session. We want to encourage, as uh, Bupashi said, the mid-conference uh, reflection, guided reflection. Please do fill in the, the uh, survey. It's within the announcement of the of the platform and also on the left panel by the uh, by the end at the bottom so please do contribute with uh, your reflections thank you thank you all thank you